Time now to check out the latest stock market action. We have Daniel Yu, global strategist from Uanta Securities, with us on the line. Thank you so much for making time for us today. Good afternoon. Well, first of all, let's begin over on Wall Street. U.S. stocks snapped a four straight days of disappointing figures and bounced back up. Should we remain optimistic the figures will claw up bit by bit, or this, uh, is this a temporary blip? Yes, if you look at the U.S. market, uh, Dow rose by about 200 points on Thursday, while the S&P 500 and NASDAQ added about 1% and 1.2%, respectively, uh, actually breaking the continued declining trend of four days. Uh, it seems that investors continue to assess the outlook for growth and also the trajectory of the monetary policy side. Uh, if you look at the Labor Department data, uh, it came out that the number of American filing for application for unemployment benefits increased uh, again last week, suggesting that demand for the work uh, seems to be cooling and maybe the tighter minor financial market situation is causing maybe the slowdown in the economy and therefore maybe Fed uh, might uh, decline in terms of the raising interest rate uh, speed. Um, However, though, nevertheless, it seems that the overall labor market uh, average wage growth seems to be quite strong. And therefore, uh, we don't think that Fed will be stopping the interest rate hike. Uh, they are likely to increase by 50 basis points in December. Uh, maybe at the beginning, the first quarter of next year, they might raise it to as high as 5%. Uh, in any case, uh, this kind of trend is causing overall global economy as well as U.S. economies to slow down, and people are uh, cautiously looking at the earnings number. Uh, individual stocks seem to trade uh, depending on the earnings growth. Uh, it seems that the, right now we need to pick stocks rather than looking at the macro pictures and trying to uh, continue to uh, look at the market in tight uh, conditions. Uh, in the future, most likely as the economy slows down, uh, earnings numbers are going to be very volatile and therefore picking stock will be very important in the future. And back here in Korea, the local bourse had a somewhat corresponding trend to the states with neighboring cacao rebounding on the Nasdaq. Do help us break down these figures. Yes, if you look at the Kospi, uh, Kospi was up about 0.76%. Kostak was up about 0.98%. Uh, it seems that foreign investors are finally coming back to the market. Uh, foreign investors net bought of 98.5 billion won of Kospi and 19.1 uh, billion won of Kostak. Uh, also, it is interesting that the institutional investors are major buyer of Kospi by 407.6 billion. Uh, retail investors are the major net seller by about 508.6 billion uh, of Kospi and also 34.6 billion one of Kostak. Uh, it seems that today the market uh, is continued to show a rising trend due to foreign investors net buying. Uh, Korean won has significantly appreciated uh, by more than one percentage point uh, down to 1,300 won to dollar rate. Uh, if you look at the overall environment, uh, South Korea Central Bank continues to announce uh, a supportive measure for the liquidity condition uh, related to the Gangwon uh, province. Uh, in terms of the property market, the uh, private equity uh, front, uh, there's continued to be a liquidity situation while the government continues to inject liquidity to stabilize the financial system. Um, being said, uh, if you look at the sector-wise today, entertainment-related sectors did quite significantly well. Webtoon sectors, the movie-related, video content, and also entertainment side. And also Chinese uh, play seems to be doing uh, quite well as the Chinese equity market and Taiwan equity market seems to do well uh, as the economy is expected to recover uh, for China next year. And South Korea posted a current account surplus in the black for the second straight month there. But a closer look shows the amount dwindled sharply on year amid slumping exports. What should this trade-reliant economy brace for? Yes, uh, if you look at the South Korea's current account, uh, it posted a surplus of about $880 million in October, uh, remaining positive for the second straight month, uh, narrowing from sharply narrowing from about 1.86 billion surplus recorded in September. Uh, it seems that the imports outpaced the export, uh, and outbound, tr outbound travel uh, surged significantly. 
the October figure is also uh, is much smaller than the year before of 8.01 billion surplus is recorded in uh, 2021 October. Uh, if you look at the good accounts, it recorded about 1.48 billion in deficit, down from 6.1 billion in surpluses. Uh, and also, if you look at service accounts uh, side, the surplus decreased from 0.64 billion, uh, which is a year earlier, to 0.05 billion, uh, significantly lower in October of 2022. Uh, this is because of the significant decline uh, in the transport account surpluses side. Uh, all Overall, it seems that the surpluses of current account uh, declining is not necessarily a positive news for the market. Uh, however, going into the future, if you look at the trade side, as the oil prices decline significantly, energy cost is expected to decline. And also, if you look at the Korean one, it has appreciated quite significantly from the peak level uh, by more than 10 percent. Uh, that might cause the trade surplus might start to happen in the future. And if that's the case, uh, that could be positive news for the Korean economic growth rate. All right, Mr. Tanyu, you thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.